Abhiram uh, Ellis Purupu of PNP Pariba is joining us now to take some questions. Abhiram, good to have you with us here. Uh, thank you very much. What, I mean, markets directionally, one way or the other, do you have a strong view or, uh, I mean, you know, go with the flow? Um, well, I think that the narrative right now has changed globally from, you know, peaking inflation to the fears that inflation that we have today will remain uncomfortably high for a long period of time. Uh, on the other hand, we've not seen major earnings cuts anywhere, even in the US or in India. So I think the whole story then revolves around how inflation stays, where it stays, whether it falls from here and so on. So therefore, it's really the key monitorable from here on. Now, if you juxtapose that with where valuations are, um, in India, it's uh, about 19 times one year forward earnings, which I would think would be quite expensive given the current scenario uh, of inflation and potentially some fall in demand. So if at all I had a strongish view, it is that in the near term, the markets do look expensive. Mm. Okay, markets are 19 times forward multiple looks expensive. Abhiram, afternoon, Rima here. So when you push the India story with your client, to your clients with various buy ideas, what is the response? How comfortable are they with the valuations? Because we've started seeing FIIs, FIIs nibble in the cash market. Rima, we are overweight India on the uh, uh, Asia X Japan portfolio. And I think investors are beginning to appreciate the fact that while even do, even developed markets are unable to deal with inflation, India's actually got a, a good handle of it. And that, uh, you know, we're in a position to ward off inflation better than most other countries. At the same time, you know, while we have seen some earnings cuts, it's not really been within the nifty. Most of it has been outside the nifty. So I think investors do appreciate that. But having said that, uh, they also do acknowledge that, the, that, that India has outperformed quite significantly. I mean, we're a market that's actually up uh, a little bit year to date and compare that with, let's say, the S&P 500, which is down between 15 to 20 percent. Most emerging markets are down 20 percent. Uh, and in that context, therefore, there is always a question of where valuations are. And I think that is the predominant uh, fear in investors' minds today. Mm. I mean, the money is there. But yeah, uh, agree with you. Uh, valuations perhaps are at 20, maybe 15 percent, 20 percent lower. Uh, there would be a wave of money, right? Uh, that's uh, that's at least the feedback that I got speaking with a bunch of foreign uh, investors. Abhiram, uh, your your thoughts on uh, uh, you know sectors like banking, which have uh, which have seen uh, you know some uh, traction coming back. July credit growth numbers have been pretty strong. Uh, HDFC Bank, ICICI, I mean the top tier ones are back in rotation. Yeah, um, we do like banks, and especially the banks that have, uh, you know, high CASA. Uh, we think that in an environment where banks themselves become more risk-averse to which segments they're going to link to, uh, you will see that uh, that the larger banks that have high CASA may have a, a winner-take-all dynamic that may favor them. Uh, but just before getting into the show, I was looking at uh, which banks have done well and so on and so forth, and I find that even within the Tier 1 banks, there's been a big divergence in performance with a couple of banks doing really well year to date and some of them not really so much. So I do think that uh, some of the focus will be will come back to those banks which have underperformed uh, year to date relative to their peers. And I think there is still value in banking as a whole. I mean, if you look at banking compared to most other sectors in India today, the combination of valuations and earnings dynamic is probably the most positive across sectors. And is there value in the IT stocks? The Nifty IT is down nearly 30% since the start of the year. Yeah, in fact, given the view that I laid out to you about, uh, about the markets as a whole, uh, I think that some money will start to move towards the classic defensives. And IT and healthcare have actually underperformed significantly year to date. In fact, the worst performing stocks in the Nifty or in the BSE 200 seem to be from this space. And if you take a look at it from a fundamental perspective, everyone seems to be worried about demand. Uh, but, you know, if you track deal flows and so on, you'll see that actually there's not really been a collapse of any sort. In fact, order books are still quite decent. And it looks like most companies are talking about their margins having bottomed. And so from here on, there could be a case uh, to, to overweight IT. And even in healthcare, if you see some, some companies in this quarter gone by also reported uh, surprise, positive surprise on the U.S. side, which I think nobody was expecting. And so, therefore, I think um, I would be quite keenly watching both IT and healthcare from here on.
Okay, uh, Abhiram, good afternoon. The, the space which has done well is consumption uh, and it's almost back to the kind of rally that we used to see three or four years back in the consumption names, both discretionary and non-discretionary. Uh, your views? On uh, discretionary, I mean, if you, if you split it into various parts, first is autos have had a significant run year to date. I mean, we still like them from a long-term perspective, but, you know, I will be surprised if if they continue to rally uh, at this pace going forward, uh, simply just based on how far they've gone up year to date. Uh, I think the fundamental drivers are still there. Commodity prices are coming down. Demand is still holding up. But it's just the fact that valuations are probably not as attractive anymore. Uh, if you go down to other parts of discretionary, like white goods, for example, uh, I think there will still be some margin pressure because uh, while... Uh, while input costs may fall, competitive pressures are extremely high there. You will still have a couple of companies that will probably gain market share, having already, you know, passed on the or the cost increases to to customers. Uh, and lastly, on FMCG, I think the space as a whole is a little bit lackluster. But that said, th there's a fundamental tailwind, which is that demand is still quite okay, and input costs will start to come down. Many companies have already taken price hikes. And so they probably may have the benefit of that at the margin level going forward. So if you take, let's say, a two to three year view, you may have a scenario where revenue growth may be only 10 odd percent, but you may have earnings growth that could be mid teens or even higher. So some pockets of FMCG look good, especially where, you know, commodity prices or, or input prices will come down. Which are the sectors, themes that you would completely avoid at this juncture, given the uncertain macro or the high valuations? I mean, at this point, I'm just looking, um, I think the market's been really efficient in pricing in all of the stories that we've been talking about in the past few minutes. But in the very near term, just going to be quite defensive here, uh, go for uh, IT and healthcare as, as immediate near term kind of picks. Uh, but from a longer term perspective, uh, of course, we still like autos and consumption and those kind of themes. But in the near term, I'd, I'd be very careful of, of those areas especially consumer discretionary. All right, Abhinam, we leave it there. Thank you very much. Appreciate you joining in uh, with that perspective. Thanks indeed.